Detlef, right now you are at uh, Tropentag, which is a major conference on resilience. You'll be doing the wrap-up of the conference in the end with an outlook on how agricultural systems can be made resilient against crises. In a nutshell, what will be the focus of your outlook? Where does the research come in? So I think, first of all, I wanted to clarify that it will not be so much an outlook, but rather a reflection and feedback mm -hmm. on the conference. It's very difficult to give an outlook because this, I think, has to be done by the researchers themselves, and they have to see where they want to go. However, I have the chance to uh, influence, of course, what they will be discussing at the end. I think the Tropenag is very interesting because it's a diverse group of people looking at all kinds of topics here, and this makes it really important. Also. It is um, a lot of young scientists there, which you usually do not see elsewhere. And these will be the future leaders in the partner countries for us. So it is really important to have this conference. Um, however, sometimes I'm missing a bit the relevance of the research which is presented. Sometimes it could be much more strengthened. However, the the key thing of the conference is basic knowledge distribution and understanding of processes. Now, researchers can help at this end. This is really crucial to us to understand what's going on in the field. The important themes which I could observe are something like breeding, agricultural management, agricultural economics, and environmental issues and soil fertility. Those were the themes which I found very interesting. And the a key thing is really to look at new methods and ideas. From my side, personally, I will put a special emphasis on three aspects. One thing is food security versus poverty. Here we're discuss, discussing very often food security as the issue, but in, in the view of KFW, it's more about poverty reduction, which is, has a much higher impact on development. Secondly, I think, which is often missing, the discussion of demographic change in the partner countries, especially the poorest countries. And this is an important factor if you look at development and at research, and this is often missing. And the third aspect which I find important is the important to highlight the importance of partnership, participation, and international cooperation, which is often missing, especially the link between research and development side. You're working at KFW, as we heard, uh, which is the German Development Bank, focusing um, on rural development besides some other areas. Can you give us an example of KFW's efforts and, if you can, some impact in terms of strengthening resilience of uh, rural populations? Mm -hmm. And where does participating in a conference like this come into this equation? First of all, one has to say that resilience is really a complex issue. You can't solve it with one magic bullet. This will not happen. But it is extremely important to, to look at this. Why is this important? Well, we think that resilience will help to reduce poverty. If a system is more resilient, there will be a better chance to have stable incomes and hopefully sustainable growth of the poorest people's households. Now, on behalf of BMZ, KFW is investing about 300 to 500 million euros per year in rural areas worldwide, especially developing countries. These are focusing on water, environmental protection, microfinance, sanitation, and transport. So there are various uh, fields that we're investing in. Some examples are, for, are that we're investing a lot in water. Water harvesting and terracing in Africa, for example, is a very efficient tool to strengthen resilience. With about 80 to 100 euros you can increase per hectare, you can increase the yield, crop yield, by about 30 to 40 percent, which is proven. So this is like an important factor if you want to strengthen the households and the farmers. In, in Egypt, for example, KFW is in investing in the rehabilitation of dams and helping about 100,000 farmers to sustain their livelihoods. Another example is maybe in, in Ghana, which is a slightly different one. Here we are supporting, through funds from the BMZ, the cooperation between smallholder farmers and industry, and therefore helping to diversify products and also therefore ensuring better income and more sustainable income. Uh, you work at uh, KFW as an expert for research cooperation and facilitation. Mm -hmm. In more general terms, what is the added value of scientific conferences for development projects on the ground, especially with regards to rural areas? 
I think the key points are networking and information. That's one thing. Secondly, you're looking at innovation, innovative methods and ideas. And this is exchanged at these kind of conferences. The second thing which I find even more important is knowing and understanding each other. And this is in both directions. Why am I saying this? I think we're not close enough. Researchers are often on one side and the development agencies on the other. They don't know each other and they don't know what they're doing. And this has various reasons. One thing is that the research often have a completely different interest in doing what they're doing than development agencies. Secondly, it's of course time consuming if you want to network and cooperate and talk to each other. Thirdly, there's often a mistrust. One side is not trusting the other side, and one side thinks they're more important than the other. And I think that's a, it's really a problem here. And this means also that one side is not valuing the other side sufficiently. And I think this is really saying that we're not close enough. We need to get together better. We need to get closer in order to turn ideas into products. If we want to do this, one side has to listen to the other. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Research is not often turned into products, and often they're stranding because they're publishing results, but politicians often don't read the publication. So there's nothing transferred into those countries. For, for our decision making at KFW, scientific evidence is really important. If we want to make structural decisions worldwide, we need evidence-based information. And as the Tropen targets, as I said before, you will see the future leaders in agricultural research. Now, those will be our partners in the partner countries at some stage. So it's really important to network here and to get to know them. So you, you say it's, an, it's a tool to get that transmission going between the different sites uh, yes. and, and, and maybe work on different types of communications to relay information into the countries. It's a fantastic platform where you can, we can exchange on an informal level in both directions and, and I think this should be used. Also here, it's a, it's a, with a thousand people, 600 to 1,000 people, it's a really good size of a conference to really get an exchange going. KFW is a member of the Global Donor Platform. With your special expertise on research cooperation, please explain why it is important that donor institutions link up on an international level for knowledge exchange and advocacy. Where do you see the added value of these networks and platforms? I think particularly GDP, according to my colleagues who are more involved in this than myself at this stage, um, for them it's an extremely useful tool. It really gives them a lot of information and it shows them the developments other donors have. So this kind of global platform where the really most important donors are present is extremely useful and helpful. It shortcuts ways for, of information and it, it helps. Um, secondly, KSW relies on external advice and information. So here is a platform where this can be, when, can be given. And you, once you know people and once you know institutions, they are more reliable and you trust each other more. So this kind of platform helps in this regard. Now, for this, personal contacts are important and GDP, G, um, GDP is providing this. Positive examples from my colleagues um, are that um, there's a working group, for example, on research in ARD. Um, they are saying that this is an extremely useful group to give them information and to be give the information of the state of the art. I mean, they're really on top of what's going on. And secondly, um, they value a lot the um, virtual briefings that you're having, these short exchanges and online sessions, because it's time efficient and you know what's going on and, and everybody can participate. So these are two examples where they say that it's extremely valuable. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you.